Hi guys, let's talk about Aoni. Aoni was one of the first playthroughs I did on the channel. I'd started playing the game after PewDiePie played it years ago and wandered off into a tunnel that I couldn't escape from. If you don't know what Aoni is, let's delve into the history. Aoni is a puzzle horror adventure game made within the RPG Maker XP engine by No Props. The game itself was inspired by Human Entertainment's Clock Tower for the Super Famicom. With four characters going into a haunted mansion and being chased around by a big monster or dangerous entity, Aoni's setup is pretty similar but still different enough to where people hadn't made the connection. Even you, the viewer, probably hadn't thought about the similarities until this video. Throughout the years, Aoni has had many revisions and changes in order to create the perfect version of the game. Version 1 released in 2008 that started things off with a little bit of plot mixed with being chased around by the Aoni a blue humanoid creature that seeks out the blood of others. In this version, we have six characters, with only one of them being the main character, Hiroshi. Alongside his buddy Kazuya, both get dragged into a deserted, rumored-to-be-haunted mansion in the outskirts of town by a bully named Takuro and his gang. While in the mansion, the six get separated when a monster chases after them, with a few never making it back alive. With Ryota dead in the bathtub, a nameless boy in the closet dying off-screen, and Takuro being murdered by the Aoni, only three of the six survive the entire ordeal, Hiroshi, Kazuya, and a girl from Takuro's gang, Megumi. Aoni version 1 was great for scaring a lot of people, but couldn't really be considered a puzzle game when the game itself had no puzzles at all. Plus, the Aoni's AI was very... dumb. Version 1 had a lot of elements here that would later be carried over in retconned in the next version. Version 3, released sometime in early 2009, titled The Remake Version, brings us back down to a total of four characters. We have Hiroshi, Takuro, Takeshi, and Mika, all of whom were given face portraits, albeit ones that were borrowed as free resources. Hiroshi is still the main character, however his demeanor has been altered to a degree where his personality and intellect is better suited for the puzzles. Takuro is seemingly not a bully anymore, Takeshi exists now, and Mika is just Megami from the last version, just with a different name. The Aoni seems to also have distorted relatives. During the latter half of the game, you get chased by a big and buff version of the monster, nicknamed Squato, thanks to a famous playthrough by Borzoi Group Let's Players Fuhiki and Gami. Stop. Squato moves at the same speed as the regular monster, it's just that he's huge. Later on, you come across a hidden fifth floor of the mansion that houses more of the distorted, mutated versions of the monster. Version 3 only has two puzzles, with one being a series staple, the piano puzzle. Easily one of the most recognizable puzzles in the Aoni series. Besides that, this version is where the majority of Aoni's ancestry resides. A lot of what's here does get carried over to the other versions, the characters, the areas, the simplistic nature of the game. It all seemed like if a new version were to release, it would be more or less similar, but better than this version. Except... Version 5 released in late 2009 after many revisions and public tests. The areas were made smaller to compensate for the walking speed of the player, more puzzles were added, and the difficulty was raised. Now the Aoni could pop up at random, rather than all of its chases being scripted, and a new entity, nicknamed the Leechum, or Cockroach, that could be pretty fast if the player is too close, causing an instant game over. Version 5 had a lot of issues regarding puzzles being too complicated, or too... Samey. Most revolved around numbers being the solution, and one of the puzzles revolves around a soroban, a form of Japanese abacus that's not commonly known in the West. The Aoni was also made incredibly harder to get away from. The time window between the player entering a room and it entering was made shorter, and its AI has been improved to walk around things better, making this the most difficult Aoni to get away from alive. Like every version of Aoni, it has a similar structure. People go in, get separated, you collect items, solve puzzles, and leave the mansion unscathed. But unlike every version, version 5 allows you to pick one of two endings. The only Hiroshi escapes ending, or the true ending. Both are virtually the same ending, except if you go for the true ending, you're able to escape with the other three that entered the mansion with you. While it is cool that Aoni attempted multiple endings, it's simply unnecessary. I feel like if they wanted to have people go for the true ending, just make it like the other versions where getting everyone else is the only thing that could be done rather than give people the easy way out and have them stop playing after the non-true ending. This version has always been my least favorite to replay. It feels good when it's all over, but try playing this version and get a total of zero deaths, then you'll see why I don't like this version. Moving away from 2009, No Props had seemingly studied what went wrong with version 5 and decided to remake Aoni one more time. 
Version 6 released in early 2011 with updates being pushed out all throughout the year with bug fixes and other improvements. This version is, by far, the most polished and perfect version of the game possible. All of the puzzles were made significantly more understand at first glance friendly than version 5. The artwork and a few sprites got a major overhaul too. Now the characters' facial portraits are displayed in a style reminiscent of Junji Ito, a famous horror manga artist who you may or may not have heard of before. When starting a new game, the player is asked to type in the main character's name. This allows for anyone to put in their name and play the game using it. This also allows the use of in-game cheat codes which make the experience different. For example, if you wanted to have the old character portraits back from the last two versions, the name Hiroshi will grant that wish for you, but you won't be able to insert your own name afterwards. There's even a South Park mode, which is pretty fun. Version 6 goes back to what version 3 did right, by having the areas laid out in a similar fashion, while also keeping the small size version 5 pushed for. No props had improved the Awani's ability to chase the player better too. The time window of the player entering a room and the Awani entering afterwards has been made longer, so that it's easier for the player to move around and think of what to do while being chased. New areas have been added on top of what was in version 5. The old building houses yet another new entity, one that has become a fan favorite. Fuari, or Blockman, is a block-like creature that is able to charge at full speed after it's walked around a bit. Most people struggle to get away from this guy, but if I had to pick a new entity addition to deal with... Well, compared to the cockroach, Fuati is a lot more tolerable. Plus, if you wanted to get rid of him quickly, just do this. See? Like version 3, three out of the four people that entered the mansion die. But not really. Instead, they all get transformed into monsters themselves. So now it's possible to run into the Aoni but with different hairstyles. Cool. Oh, and the intro cutscene from version 3 has been added back in as an ending cutscene now. So that's what Aoni is at its core. But what if I told you, there's a bit more to it than that. Released around the same time that version 3 was popular, the Aoni series of light novels had made its way onto bookshelves in Japan, and in North America as ebooks. If you're not aware of what a light novel is, it's essentially a book but with illustrations placed in between a few sections of the chapters, making it easily accessible to those who watch anime and read manga, but is also good for people who like reading but have trouble picturing what's happening. While books are good for feeding the reader's imagination, some are physically unable to picture what's in their imagination inside their brain. So, light novels, in a way, circumvent this issue. The Aoni series of light novels serve as the god of the series' lore, what most adaptations rely on when dealing with the series' aspects and story. A lot of people aren't aware that Aoni has a series of light novels, and it's kind of sad. The light novels gave the games a complete facelift, with writer Kenji Kuroda fleshing out the characters more than the games, and illustrator Kari Suzuragi giving the characters appealing and signature designs that got adopted by future Aoni adaptations. As well as that, Two new characters have been introduced. Shun is the main protagonist for most of the novels, being the creator of the Aoni game. In one of the novels, his username on the internet is no props. While I'm not sure if he's a self-insert character, he definitely is an important part of the series. Shun is a new kid who gets bullied by Takuro. Shun is in a similar position to a character named Naoki. You may remember Naoki from version 3 of the game. He shows up in Hiroshi's dream wearing an Aoni costume. In the light novels, Naoki is a character closely associated with the Aoni, as a way to get revenge on Takuro for his bullying. For this video, I won't say much about Naoki to avoid spoilers. The other new character is named Anna, Shun's love interest, who has a sixth sense. To summarize what happens in Volume 1 of the light novels, Shun is busy making his game before Hiroshi notices him and becomes Shun's test player. Takuro pops in after Hiroshi leaves and both Shun and Takuro get into a scuffle. Afterwards, Takeshi and Mika help Takuro move stuff into the jailhouse, a house that recently had rumors floating around of a monster being inside it. Sounds familiar? Hiroshi gets dragged along while studying the animals in the surrounding area. Some have been strangely mutated to have blue skin and big black eyes. Shun and Anna also enter the jailhouse and everyone gets trapped inside. The gang reacts pretty similarly to how the beginning of the game starts off. Everyone splits up and now we're left with Shun and Anna for the majority of the novel. 
Shun keeps having feelings of deja vu before realizing that everything that was happening in the jailhouse was happening exactly like his game. Even the Aoni itself, the monster that Shun created, was chasing around and killing people that he knew. But now that Shun's realized that this is exactly like his game, he knows what to do to escape with everyone still alive. As I mentioned before, since this novel was released around the time that version 3 was popular, a lot of the key moments that happen in this are adaptations of those same moments from the game. This is a bit of a trend with the light novel series. When a new version comes out, the light novels reflect on those changes. You may also be aware of the live action films for Aoni. There are two live action films based on Aoni. More specifically, they're based on the first and second light novels, respectively. Joey the Anime Man made a few videos about the first live action adaptation, but never the second. That's because the first live action film was kind of a walking pool of toxic waste that had a lot of glaring issues that turned a lot of people off from watching it. Even the trailer wasn't good and I subtitled it. Even attempting to get a singer from AKB48 as the main lead of the film as a selling point, this film was pretty bad. If you want to hear more about this film, I recommend the Anime Man's video on the matter. So instead of talking about the first live action film, I will talk about the second one, which is, in my opinion, the best of the two. Because this film is based on the second light novel, there may be some things that I will compare and contrast between the book and the film. Alongside that, I will also be pointing out a few things that made this film, the second one, better than the first one for me. First and foremost, the characters all have their signature designs from the light novels, with the exception that Hiroshi doesn't have his grayish, whitish hair, but this is easily forgiven. All of the characters act exactly as I'd imagine from how they are portrayed in the books and the game. In the first film, all of the characters are present, but you could never tell me who's supposed to be who by looking at a picture. The jailhouse is better represented in this compared to the first film, looking ominous and abandoned just as expected. Warning signs stand before it, telling those not to enter, which only adds to the nature of this place. The Aoni itself is much better presented and animated here than before. He was a bumbling gorilla of a monster before, but now he's pretty faithful to what he's like in the games and novels. What's different between this film and the second light novel is the absence of the cockroach and the presence of Fuati, nicknamed in this film as the upgraded version, and the fact that the novel is based on version 5 of the game, whereas the film is kinda just based on Aoni as a whole. What the first movie was also lacking was the puzzle element of the series, something that is essential to Aoni no matter the adaptation, which the second film does a lot better. What the second film also does a lot better is the addition of actual game footage. Kind of. It's not the actual Aoni game that's being shown on screen, but it is a pretty convincing lookalike, a lot better than the first movie. Also, a funny easter egg, this code that you see here is actual code from RPG Maker XP, the same engine that the original game was made in. The music that was present in the game shows up a few times in the movie, more times than the first one, and every time it's heard, it's changed up a bit from before. Overall, if you want to have a pleasant horror movie experience or just want to see Aoni on the big screen and not watch something... bad, I'd give Aoni version 2.0 a watch, as it's officially available on Amazon with English subtitles. Finally, I'd like to talk about something that most are on the fence about. See, since Aoni is a 2D game represented by sprites, the light novels are a great way to experience the series like never before. But a problem with the light novels is that there is no animated adaptation of them. You can't watch a book, so most might not be interested. So what if we took Aoni and made it an anime? Two of which, to be exact. Introducing Aoni the Blue Monster and Aoni the Animated Movie, released around the same time of each other and confusing a lot of people in the process. Because both anime originally had the same name, Aoni the Animation, a lot of people either watch the movie or the series. So let's talk about both. Aoni the Blue Monster is a comedic take on the Aoni series and the Japanese side of the community as a whole, with only 13 episodes, each being 3 minutes in length. This adaptation of Aoni has quite a few references to the many different versions of the game, with version 3 being the most referenced. It also has references to what people in the community do for Aoni. For example, there's an episode titled Supersonic Aoni. For those unaware, you know how with Pokemon you can play the game casually or you can play with a Nuzlocke challenge? That's kind of like what Supersonic, or rather, Super Speed Aoni is. It's for players that are already tired of playing the game normally and want to challenge. People play the game at different speeds that are faster than normal to see if it's possible to clear the game at such a fast speed. Now, with that description, you might think that I'm talking about speedrunning where players see how fast they can beat a game as humanly possible, but that's not correct. What I am referring to is manipulating the speed of the game to be faster than normal and beat it with that speed. People can time themselves with this challenge, but I've never seen anyone do that. The most famous person to play Super Speed Aoni is a YouTuber by the name of Kyo. He has completed this challenge on his channel for quite a while, and I personally found all of his Super Speed Aoni videos highly entertaining. 
even if they didn't have English subtitles. Awani the Blue Monster also has a very keen eye to details within the games. For example, in this scene with Takuro and Takeshi trying to figure out the number to the combination safe, they input the numbers 1415. In version 6, one of the random piano puzzle answers that you can get is 1416. Just one number off from being the right answer, Takeshi! This series also does a good job of being funny. It may not be for everyone, some may find this series stale, but for Aoni fans, this anime will definitely get some smiles and laughs. On the other side of the coin, Aoni the animated film is just... bad. To anyone that likes this film, I deeply apologize if I hurt your feelings, but this film... Compared to the comedy anime that was released alongside it, is just... not good. The animation is all 3D CG, and while that doesn't automatically make the movie the worst thing ever, it certainly doesn't make things easy to look at with how cheap it looks. I'm aware that this is an animated film based on a game that's completely free, but the comedy anime did way better in this regard, and only one episode in that series had 3D CG for animation. Plus, the character designs here just look like rip-offs from other series. For example, the main character, Manabe, just looks like a slightly edited version of Satoshi Mochida from Corpse Party. I get that they probably wanted to take the Aoni version 1 approach by having the characters not stand out too much, but that's exactly the problem that I have with these characters. None of them have interesting designs or any interesting design quirks that make them unique. Their personalities are also all pretty stiff compared to what the characters from the light novels and other films depict. The story itself is also completely forgettable, and the only reason for that is because they tried to make the story convoluted for the sake of making it convoluted. Apparently, the Aoni's backstory revolves around a special type of blue flower that transforms those into the Aoni, which completely goes against what the light novels had set up and makes absolutely no sense at all. I know that this film and the light novels are two different canons, but the film's version of the Aoni's conception also directly contradicts what we see in the games. There are multiple different versions of the Aoni, and yet you mean to tell me that all of them were the result of one type of flower? I don't buy it. The backstory in the light novels is better written than this. Go read those instead. With all that being said, I've pretty much covered the entirety of Aoni. Right? Oh, God!